The majority of plants on Earth are angiosperms, otherwise known as flowering plants. As may be expected, every angiosperm produces flowers of one sort or another. The precise form varies greatly between species, but a flower's basic function is always to be pollinated, allowing seeds to develop. Every flower that is successfully pollinated develops into a fruit, given enough time. The scientific name angiosperm roughly translates into vessel seed, or to put it another way, a seed inside of a container. The fruit is this container. As with flowers, there is a considerable variety of fruit structures and functions. However, the basic goal of any fruit is some combination of protection for the seeds and distribution of the seeds. This distribution is especially important, as plants are not generally known for their locomotory abilities. Most of the time, wherever a seed grows, that is where the plant will be for the duration of its life. Thus, it is vital for seeds to put some distance between themselves and their parent plant. There are a number of ways of accomplishing this. Some fruits are designed to be palatable to various sorts of animals, allowing the seeds to be carried for a time in the digestive tract. It is a safe bet that by the time the seed has passed through the creature in question, said creature will have wandered a fair distance from where it ate the fruit. Still, this is by no means the only method. Other fruits take the form of barbed seed capsules that hook onto the fur or feathers of a passing animal. Still others might take the form of structures that catch the wind, carrying the seeds aloft. A dandelion's parachute is one such example, and the wing of a maple seed is another. In a few cases, the fruit does not rely upon animals or wind. Sometimes there is a more direct and violent approach. Every now and then, we find a plant species with fruits that explode, scattering the seeds in the process. Some of these explosions are more impressive than others, and some fruit structures can be highly modified. In some cases, though, a slight developmental adjustment is all that is really needed. Such is the case with a species that has gained a certain amount of infamy over the years. The Genistii are a tribe within the Legume family. This tribe includes lupins, gorse, and a group of plants commonly known as brooms. The name appears to be derived from an old English term associated with brambles. However, the practice of using branches from these plants as sweeping tools led to the name becoming associated with sweeping. To this day, we most often refer to a long-handled sweeping tool as a broom rather than using the older name of besom. One broom species in particular is Cytisus scoparius, known as common broom or scotch broom. The species name Scoparius pretty much means broom as well. This plant is native to Western and Central Europe, but it has found its way to many other locations as an ornamental plant in various gardens. Alas, brooms tend to be remarkably hardy plants, capable of thriving in relatively poor soils. They are legumes after all, and as such, they are associated with microbial symbionts that obtain a steady supply of usable nitrogen from the atmosphere. Most plants do not have such a ready supply of this vital nutrient. Because of this and other features, scotch broom has become an invasive species in many parts of the world. Another feature that has aided in this expansion is the nature of its seed pods. As they grow, they look much like pea pods at first. However, when these fruits mature, they dry out, turning from green to almost black. As each pod dries, the outer skin shrinks more than the inward tissues. This puts the entire structure under considerable tension. There is a seam between the two halves of each pod that acts as a weak point. A great many fruits are meant to split open along certain weak points. This is common enough to have the scientific name of dehiscence. In a few cases, such splitting happens quite rapidly, and the resulting force scatters the seeds as a result. This is known as explosive dehiscence. In the case of Scotch Broom, the seam on the pod eventually breaks and the entire pod snaps open. This happens with enough force to produce an audible sound. 
What remains afterward is a couple of empty halves that have twisted back into lazy spirals. That and about a dozen seeds scattered about the immediate area. As each plant produces a large number of pods every season, it tends to end up surrounded by hundreds of seeds. Some of these are eaten, but at least a few germinate, so the broom continues its steady march across the landscape a few meters at a time. A similar pattern is found in the pods of Impatiens capensis, sometimes known as jewel weed. The seed pods here are made up of five parts rather than two halves. Unlike the fruits of the common broom and its relatives, these seed pods don't need to dry out before they explode. Still, the overall principle is more or less the same. Inner layers of tissue outgrow the outermost layers, putting the whole structure under tension. A weak point along the seam between each of the five parts completes the mechanism. When mature, these little pods explode with only a slight touch, generally obliterating themselves in the process. No matter, so long as the seeds are distributed. Such sensitivity may often lead to a chain reaction. A pod explodes, and some of the seeds and other fragments just happen to hit nearby pods, causing them to explode as well. A couple of types of explosive fruit can be found among the cucurbits. Cucurbitaceae is a plant family that includes gourds, melons, and cucumbers. The species Cyclanthera brachystachia is commonly called the exploding cucumber. The fruits of this plant look somewhat like cucumbers, though they are a bit shorter, distinctly asymmetrical, and covered with prominent spines. The entire fruit appears to be bent to one side, as though one half grew faster than the other. When this structure explodes, this larger half rapidly peels back, flinging the seeds outward. The other half tends to split into two smaller pieces that also peel back. As for the seeds, they are dark and flat, looking a little like puzzle pieces. This provides a sharp contrast to the pale green hues of the fruit that launched them. A slightly different approach is seen in Echpalium elitarium, sometimes called the squirting cucumber. As the name suggests, this plant does not distribute its seeds with a conventional explosion. Instead, the seeds are shot out, and this happens in a rather unexpected way. These fruits also resemble cucumbers, though they're rather fuzzy in comparison. Each grows hanging from the top of a nearly vertical stalk. When the fruit is mature, it breaks away from this stalk and begins to fall. The break exposes an opening, and as it turns out, this particular fruit is highly pressurized. So, as it falls, it releases a spray of rather noxious slime that includes a number of seeds. As these pods hang at a slight angle, the spray carries the seeds off to one side, rather than simply sending them directly up to fall straight back down. Another plant uses a somewhat different form of artillery. Witch hazel is familiar to some for its medicinal uses, but it also has an interesting little quirk in its fruit structure. The fruits in this case are pods that each contain a pair of black, glossy seeds. As the pods mature and begin to dry out, they slowly split open to reveal these two seeds. The pods continue to dry out and shrink further. This puts increasing pressure on the back of each seed where it is still surrounded by the drying tissues. Eventually, something has to give. The final effect is not unlike what happens if a person grasps a wet bar of soap too tightly. The seeds are effectively launched at a speed of roughly 20 miles per hour, more than enough to travel a fair distance from the parent plant. Sometimes the seeds are not aimed at the ground, but rather at other plants. The dwarf mistletoes are a group of parasites within the genus Archuthobium. They specialize in growing on various conifer species. While some mistletoes rely on birds to distribute their seeds, the dwarf mistletoes have no such partnership. The fruits simply explode when mature, and the sticky seeds are scattered throughout the nearby forest canopy. If any happen to land on a suitable tree branch, they pierce the tree bark and begin to integrate their roots into the underlying vascular tissue. Sometimes it is the tree itself, rather than a tree parasite, that disperses its seeds with such explosive dehiscence. Havea brasiliensis is a species more well known for its sap than its seeds. It is commonly called the rubber tree, and the sap is a natural source of latex, forming the basis of non-synthetic rubber. 
Each of the fruits of this tree contain three relatively large seeds. When the fruit splits open, the force is sufficient to send the seeds some distance from the tree, despite their relatively large size. Still, this isn't all that impressive compared to another particularly violent sort of tree. The sandbox tree, Hura crepitans, is native to tropical regions in North and South America. It is a distant relative to the poinsettia, but unlike its cousin, it is a singularly unpleasant sort of plant. To begin with, the trunk is covered in spines that any bramble might be proud of. To make things all the worse, these spines secrete poisonous sap. This sap is poisonous enough to find use as an arrow poison and a means of poisoning fish. It isn't all that surprising to find fruits that are every bit as unpleasant as the tree that bears them in this case. The fruits of this tree vaguely resemble small pumpkins, with roughly 15 segments around a central stalk. As these fruits dry, the different levels of shrinking in the tissues cause the buildup of a frightening amount of tension. When this fruit detonates, it does so with a noise not unlike that of a gunshot. The segments, and the seeds they contain, are launched at a velocity of roughly 160 miles per hour. They end up scattering as far as 45 meters away, and possibly further under the right conditions. This especially explosive dehiscence has earned the sandbox tree another name. It is known to some as the dynamite tree. In the end, there are a surprising number of plants that launch their seeds in various ways. It is a strategy that is not confined to any one group. Rather, it is found among species throughout the plant kingdom. This should offer some insight into its apparent success, as it has repeatedly developed among so many different lineages. Still, impressive though the spectacle might be, I am personally relieved that such methods are not universal. It might make a walk through the woods just a little bit too exciting. Not only that, but if every fruit was the explosive sort, that would remove a number of palatable options from the menu. So perhaps it is for the best that a great many fruits rely upon animal diners for seed dispersal, rather than resorting to more explosive measures. Thank you for listening. I hope you have enjoyed this brief glimpse into the more unusual side of the natural world. If you wish to know more, here are a few things that might be worth looking into. If you found this enjoyable, feel free to leave a like. If you think others would enjoy this content, by all means, share. If you have something to say or ask about, honest comments are always welcome. If you wish to see more from this channel, a subscription would be most helpful. Until next time.